she has a way with words. So she'll be speaking. Uh, please welcome her. I trust you are all well. It is indeed a privilege and honor to be here to be able to testify for the Lord. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some people in the audience. I, um, my mom is here today with me. Auntie Marilyn is here. Auntie To is here. Auntie Susan and Uncle Abner, he was here, but I don't know. Okay, he'll be right back. And Uncle Charles is here, and my friends, I thank you, everyone, that um, was able to come here today. I would like to thank New Life Church for giving us the privilege to come and worship with you today. We thank you for that. So today I'll be sharing my testimony. The book of Revelation says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word according to their testimony. So therefore, testimonies have... Um, they hold a, a place to, um, inc to encourage people that are going through trials and tribulations. So without further ado, I would like to invite you to stand as we read our memory text in honor of the word of God. So please turn with me to the book of James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 6. If you get there, please say amen. amen. Okay, the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives, you, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Please bow your heads for prayer. Our loving and kind Father who dwells among the cherubim and the seraphim. Before thy glorious throne of grace we come. We thank thee for this opportunity that, that you have granted us to worship you, Lord. We plead your forgiveness. For thy mercies and blessings we are thankful. We beseech your presence to tabernacle and dwell with us here in your sanctuary. May we see a glimpse of your glory today. Speak through me, Lord, anoint my lips, Father. Forgive us, Lord, where we have stole thy glory, and help us to glorify and praise you, for thou art worthy of praise, adoration, and worship. Open our eyes so we may see thee. Open our ears that we may hear thy voice, and open our hearts that we may accept your word. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. 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 You may be seated. My testimony is entitled, Held Hostage in a Black Hole. Held Hostage in a Black Hole. When I was born, I came in a package. To this day, the package contains two eyeballs, a pair of ears, DNA, 46 chromosomes, and of course a temple. There's something that has always been peculiar about this package. It had the desire to sin, yet while it was still a child, no one taught it how to whine and throw toys at people. Sin was like the stem of the package. Due to my sins, I deserved to die brutally. A deadly tree of torture stood still. It was planted on the dark hill of Calvary. It awaited me. I owed something I could not pay. Right in time, a friend by 
the name of love came to save me. So who is love? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, God is love. Well, the word love is a four-letter word that has been translated to over 6,500 dialects, but I tell you to forget that number because it changes from year to year. From dawn to dusk, we, we stretch our mouth, we allow, sorry. From dawn to dusk, we stretch our mouth muscles, we allow our tongues to release, to release their chains, and the word love flows from our lips. Our dialogues and conversations catch this word, yet love remains mis, misinterpreted, misrepresented, and misunderstood. Sometimes it's hard to comprehend the love of God. But saints, I tell you that no greater love is greater than Jesus' love. Love loved me so much to the extent that he paid my death bill. He forsook his glorious throne above, stepped into time, took on human flesh to come and die for me. It's certainly not because I deserved or even earned it, but to satisfy the harsh and brutal crucifixion penalty against my poor lost soul. It is a redemption far beyond my understanding. And his bruises, now pierced hands, permanent and crucial scars, and excruciating torments would be accepted by God as a payment for all my iniquities. He shed his blood so I can live eternally with him. Each time I ponder on the love of God, I can't help but to owe a debt of gratitude for his tender mercies that rain on me because without him in my life, I will be a dead corpse. I was born and raised in an Adventist home. My grandmother took us to church every Sabbath, so going to church was a requirement, not an option. I attended church for the sake of my grandmother. My grandfather was not an Adventist then, and uh, he often asked us questions like, how much money do you get paid for perfect attendance? <laughs> I grew attending church as a routine, so I really did not know why I attended church. In contrast with the meaning of the Sabbath, I had a tendency to feel that the Sabbath was a burden because that meant I couldn't watch TV, I couldn't play with my friends or hang out with my friends. As I grew older, I began to learn a little bit more about God. Um, during Sabbath school classes, they used to tell us stories about God and I fell in love with Jesus. So I would wait and watch the sun's glorious rays shining in authority as they prepared to go home to the west because that meant it was sunset and Sabbath had begun. We used to walk to church in the morning and the journey took us about an hour. I was raised by my grandparents and um, my mom migrated to US to the USA um, in September the year 2000, seeking a better life for herself, my sister and I, and um, my dad passed away when I was four years old, so I never got a chance to really know him and meet him. I never grew up with him, like I said, I grew up with my grandparents. So. Um, Zimbabwe's economy dropped drastically. I saw children in our neighborhood who experienced poverty and hunger. Silently, they sat with nothing to eat, trying to resist the loud alarms in their stomachs ringing in agony. I praise God that he provided us with food to eat. It was not always what I wanted to eat, but God provided for us. Um, the economic situation declined. Cost of living rose drastically. At that point, the best thing was for my sister and I to attend a boarding school. And uh, we attended Circuit Art Boarding School. It was a Catholic school. I was pressured into a lot of things, peer pressure, bullying. I was also pressured into baptism I, um, to become a Catholic. I didn't know what to do. At that moment, I fell in the chambers of confusion. I often felt paralyzed. I attended one bapti baptismal class, and for some reason, I never made my way. I never made my way to attend more classes. 
We were encouraged to participate in the worship service and um, I was part of the worship team. I was, um, I, I was the drummer and I used to dance. And um, we had to attend mass every Wednesday and every Sunday. We were also required to bow down to statues and the cross in the chapel and we spent hours praying through Mary. I knew very well that my grandmother had um, emphasized the Ten Commandments. I was too scared to stand up for God because I didn't want to be the only one out. I didn't want to feel left out. So I kind of went with the flow and uh, I did not stand up for God. So that this led to a rebellion that erupted inside of me. The devil used the opportunity to hold me hostage in a black hole. I refused to listen to what anyone said, in quotes. You could not tell me anything about nothing because I knew everything about nothing. <laughs> I, decided to, I decided to do whatever I wanted. Does that sound familiar? It is the one and only commandment in the satanic religion, do what thou wilt. I, did, I decided to do whatever I wanted. As time went on at Circuit Heart School, I began to be exposed to various cultures and beliefs. My friend's parents um, allowed her to paint her nails and to pierce her ears. I often felt so left out. I began to desire to do it. I was not aware that jewelry originated to communicate with spirits. So when I commenced wearing jewelry, I, um, I was unaware that there was um, a communication going on within me. I became a slanderer. I commenced gossiping and making fun of people. I was responsible for most of the rumors that were passed on. That's right, you guessed it, I was a bully. It came to the point that I was feared. I have a confession, I became a bad liar. John 8 verse 44 says, the Bible says that Satan is the father of all lies. So I was going um, through a rough patch in my life. I became so cruel. I remember an incident that I burnt my sister with fire just for the fun of it. I was going through a rough time in my life. I, I was also a proud, a proud person. I was a good athlete and uh, being one of the fastest in track and field events in the province, hence I had a crew of followers. People made songs about me and I became famous and proud of myself. The devil kept me hostage in his black hole. Where I come from, adults and um, adults have the obligation to discipline you with a whip and I was beaten for causing trouble and stubbornness. This punishment became less effective. No matter how hard or brutal I was beaten, I dared not cry. I became immune to pain because I was beaten up often. I would laugh after I got whipped just to get on the person's nerves. I did all this miscellaneous with a friend of mine. She was my partner in crime. From time to time, I would flip through my Bible and just read the black and white words. I prayed mostly when I was in trouble and I, expect, I would expect God to get me out of my mess. When I was 12 years old, my sister and I had the privilege and the opportunity to migrate to Canada to stay with my mom. So my sister and I moved to, moved to Montreal, Quebec. I went through so many challenges. First of all, coming from Zimbabwe to Montreal, the weather is so different. Um, it was around December when we moved there, and there was so much snow. It was very hard for me to adjust. And um, I also had several different challenges. Like I said, I grew up with my grandparents. I never really grew up with my mom. And at that time, I was getting to know her, and um, my mom was very quick to know when I was up to know, um, up to know who she could read through my behavior. So, um, and uh, every, almost everyone spoke French in Montreal. And uh, coming from Zimbabwe, I had no French background, and my English wasn't 
much good because it's not my first language. So I had, um, I had a lot of difficulties and um, as I was very homesick as well. And as time went by, I uh, began to make friends and I was befriended by the, by, uh, the popular girls in, in class. They influenced me to making wrong decisions like not studying and cheating during exams. And um, after a while, some of these friends, some of, they, they started smoking, and I praise God for his mercy, that he never gave up on me even after I gave, I was a rebel, rebel of the gospel. I thank God for my mom who never stopped praying for me. I've, um, there was an incident that one of my friends ran away from home and after that incident I knew but I didn't. I had to make changes in my life. I went through, I, w I went to church. It was a ritual, a requirement, no questions asked. Six months later, my mom, my sister and I moved to British Columbia. We lived in a transition home. That one month I spent in that transition home, I learned how to become humble. I was very ungrateful for the life I lived. That one month I had a chance to contemplate and think about my life. I chased my thoughts as they rapidly raced in my mind. I fell into a prison of confusion, the dark chambers of doubt. Unanswered questions about life, short darts and sword and brutally crushed me inside out. My heart began to sink in the flood my emotions fabricated. I wrestled memories that haunted and lingered around my brain. I went through emotional breakdowns and uh, my sister and I started attending um, sessions with a family counselor. And um, as time went by, I, I felt it was time to make it right with Jesus. I began to see that true happiness is only found from God. Amen. We cannot buy a prescription for satisfaction. Not even Oprah or Dr. Phil have solid advice and help. Mm -hmm. That's when reality kicked in and I realized that I... I no one else was able to take away my burdens except for Jesus himself. Yeah. Jesus is indeed the best counselor who knows us better than we know ourselves. So I finally decided to dedicate my life to Jesus through counsel from our mentor. And at that time, Auntie Susan was um, my teacher and I, uh, I got advice from her. So after accepting him to spontaneously outflow in my life, I began to see how empty my life without Jesus as a personal savior was. For the first time in my life, I began to experience an amazing, extravagant exuberance flowing within my heart. I wanted more of Jesus in my heart. So after I was born again, I came through even more challenges. I was caught in between the miasmic secular world and the spiritual world. I have to admit I was addicted to reading novels. I, I, um, I loved reading science fiction novels and I spent sleepless nights trying to finish novels. And um, I came to understand that the devil is using such literature to, bri to blind the minds of many lest we forget to do his will. Mm -hmm. I seriously thought it was normal for teenagers to read about vampires, but clearly I did not understand what Philippians 4 verse 8 says. Please turn with me to your Bibles to Philippians 4 verse 8. When you get there, please say Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Amen. Philippians 4 verse 8 reads, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, 
whatever things are good are of good report if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things I used to go to the library often and I thought I brought a book from the library. Little did I know I was inviting evil spirits into our home. Um, I'm reminded of an, um, a conversation that happened. Please do not quote me the story. Okay, so what happened is a, a Satanist was having a conversation with a Christian and the Christian asked the Satanist, so how do you predict people's futures? And the Satanists said, um, if there's uh, movies in, the, in, the, in their house, if there's fiction books in their house, and if they cannot memorize scripture, if they do not have any scripture memorized, I can predict their future. And uh, when Jesus was uh, tempted, he often quoted scripture to help him overcome the temptation. And uh, so if Jesus quoted scripture to help him overcome temptation, how more do we need to memorize scripture? Mm -hmm. The devil deceived me in, his, in the black hole to think that vampires exist. No wonder there wasn't any peace at home. I was introduced to breaking, uh, break dancing, rather, B-girl, and I began to take dance classes. Movie watching was also one of my addictions. I could memorize a movie script in five minutes or a song, but I struggled memorizing scripture. I could tell you the plot of a movie in order from the rising action to the climax, from the climax to the conclusion, but I couldn't tell you the Ten Commandments in order. If you ask me the latest Hollywood gossip, I will speak without ceasing. But if you ask me about the spirit of prophecy, I had no idea whatsoever. I enjoyed listening to secular music like hip hop, rap music, and uh, I had no idea that I was being entertained by the devil himself. When I found this out, I um, was so fascinated to the point that I took my phone and erased all the secular music on my phone. And um, up a few days later, I regretted the, dis the abrupt decision that I made, and I learned something from that incident. I learned that if you have a if you have a problem, you ought to go on your knees, plead, and yearn with God to take away the desire. For instance, if you have a problem with um, watching TV and um, and you know it's not good for you, but you. You, you just love doing it. So if you take your TV and you throw it outside the window, have you solved your problem? No, because no, the desire remains in you. So I learned that if I was going to delete all the secular music, I had to replace it with something else, but the desire remained in me. So that's when I knew I had to ask God to take away the, that desire that I had. So when we moved from Montreal to BC, God blessed me with a loving and supportive church family, the Suri SDA Church. I got acquainted to many spiritual mentors and leaders. Uncle Charles Mujikwa played an important role in my spiritual work. When I first met him, I could see Jesus through him. I began to search about God. I was, I was confused. I remember we used to spend hours after AY um, talking to pastor and asking questions about God and the pastor Mellis would teach and enlighten us. We talked about challenges that teenagers face nowadays. I waited for the conviction to take down all the celebrity posters in my room and I took down my Miley Cyrus poster which I loved so much. I gradually um, I avoided secular music that was in my control. I came to understand that the world is corrupting us by, try, by telling us, believe in yourself. I do not believe in myself, I believe in God. Amen. I do not have self-esteem or self-confidence, but I have confidence in God. Amen. My decision worried my friends at school. I remember I was having a conversation with my friends at school and I was telling them, we were, we were talking about movies. 
and um, I was telling them how um, I listened um, I listened to a sermon from Ivor Mayers and he was talking about movies and entertainment, the entertainment industry. And I was talking to my friends about how movies are called movies because they're designed to move you. And I was letting them know about how, you know, when you're watching TV, that you find programs and how the devil is using those programs to deceive you, to, pro to program you um, into something that you're not. For example, if you watch a TV show, after the TV show you might speak like what you just heard and you might act like the actors that were just on TV because the Bible says by beholding we become. So whatever we spend time beholding, that's, um, that's what we become. And I was telling my friend about how um, when, when you're watching a TV on the TV set, there's channels, right? and uh, channeling is a communication going on and you don't even know it, but there is a communication going on within you. And um, I, I also mentioned about the remote control, that um, with the remote control, you're controlling the TV from a distance. So you're controlling from a distance and uh, I was letting them know that that's how the devil is deceiving people today. So he's controlling you from a distance and you don't, you don't even know it. So um, when, I, when I was talking to my friend, she told me I was speaking nonsense. And I was comforted by the verse in Isaiah 42. Please turn with me to your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5, 5 to 8. And if you get there, please say amen. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5 to 8. Amen. Amen. Thus says God the Lord, who separated the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and sweet to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you into righteousness, and I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, <coughs> those who sit in darkness from the prison house, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to a craft image. So that verse really comforted me, comforted me around that time, and um, the months were a torrent. I got a phone call from the Sabbath school director, and I remember what exactly happened that night. I was just having a conversation with my mom, and the phone rang, and so my mom picked up the phone, and uh, after my mom gave me the phone, and I talked to the Sabbath school director, and um, she asked me to take the position as a Sabbath school superintendent. My first reaction was, um, you must be kidding me. Because I thought to myself, I'm only 14 years old, nothing qualifies me. I thought um, I was very young. So I got advice from my mom and she told me I should pray about it and that's what I did. I prayed about it and um, I decided to take the position to serve the Lord. Matthew 5 verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So God works in mysterious ways. He transformed my life from a bully to Christ's disciples. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. The question is, are you willing to let him increase while you decrease, to claim this as a model and live according to it? The devil held me hostage in a black hole. I escaped from the black hole because of Christ's love that was sealed on the cross and my name that was permanently written on the cross. It's because of him that I fled from the black hole. It's certainly not because um, not anyone saved me or it's not the, um, it's not the Adventist message that saved me, but it, it's the God of the Adventist message that saved me. Mm -hmm. So, 
Today you might be here and you're certainly caught in between the miasmic, and, miasmic secular world and the spiritual world. And you just want to give your life to God. To let him have full control of your life.